Welcome to the third part of the Pelvic Organ Prolapse video course. As you start to think about the treatment plan, it is important to consider the patient's age, medical comorbidities, severity of the symptoms, desire for future sexual activity and fertility, and risk factors for recurrence. Let's come up with a treatment plan for Mrs. Watson. What are her problems? One, bulge symptoms. She has a grade 3 cystocele. Two, incomplete emptying and one episode of urinary retention requiring catheterization. She has a grade 3 cystocele and she did have a urinary tract infection in the past. Three, dysuria. This could be due to urogenital atrophy. And four, poor pelvic floor muscle strength. She's relatively healthy for her age and desires to be sexually active in the future. There are two main treatment options for Mrs. Watson, non-surgical and surgical. If you're a family physician and Mrs. Watson desired to have surgery, you could have referred her to a gynecologist. Mrs. Watson does seem to be medically fit for surgery, but would like to avoid surgery at this time. So let's take a closer look at the non-surgical options. Let's start with lifestyle modifications. What are Mrs. Watson's modifiable risk factors? She has an elevated BMI of 29 and smokes half a pack per day. You advise her to lose weight and assess her readiness to quit smoking. She would like to try quitting smoking and you provide her some smoking cessation resources. You also advise her to continue avoiding constipation and heavy lifting. Since Mrs. Watson has poor pelvic floor muscle strength, it is important for her to do pelvic floor strengthening exercises. You advise her to do Kegel exercises. Kegel exercises are used to strengthen urethral support by strengthening levator and eye muscles. For prolapse, the patient learns to contract pelvic floor muscles during episodes of increased intra-abdominal pressure to prevent pelvic organ descent. Another option for her is to do pelvic floor physiotherapy. Fortunately, Mrs. Watson has insurance and she would like to try physio. Since Mrs. Watson has urogenital atrophy, you advise her to have local estrogen replacement. Local estrogen can be administered using a cream, such as Premarin or Estragine, an ovule, such as Vagifem, or a ring, such as Estring. If a patient desires to have non-hormonal treatment, a cream containing hyaluronic acid, such as Promeno, Replens, or Gynotroph can be used. You give Mrs. Watson a prescription for Premarin cream. Since Mrs. Watson would like to avoid having a surgery, you suggest for her to try a pessary. A pessary is a silicone device that is placed into the vagina. It provides support to the pelvic organs. A pessary will improve Mrs. Watson's bulge symptoms. While some pessaries are removed for cleaning every three months, other pessaries need to be removed and cleaned every day. While some patients are able to clean a pessary at home, others see a physician at irregular intervals. Since Mrs. Watson has a cystocele and she would like to be sexually active in the future, a pessary is a good option for her. There are many types of pessaries available and many patients continue to be sexually active with a pessary. If you're a family physician, you can do the initial assessment and then refer the patient to a gynecologist for a pessary fitting. Some family physicians also run their own pessary clinics. Many patients are independent with their pessary care and they are able to take out their own pessary, wash it and replace it. Mrs. Watson agrees to proceed with a pessary and a gynecologist fits her with a ring pessary. She will return for a follow-up appointment or sooner if she develops any problems. She has been using the ring pessary for the past 9 months. She has been seeing you regularly every three months for pessary changes. Mrs. Watson's bulge symptoms have improved and she feels like she's able to empty her bladder fully. She has not had any new episodes of urinary retention. She has also been using Premarin cream for urogenital atrophy and reports having improved dysuria. She has also resumed sexual activity with her partner and reports no concerns. She has been seeing a pelvic physiotherapist regularly and doing Kegel exercises. In terms of her lifestyle modifications, Mrs. Watson has lost 25 pounds and now has a BMI of 25. 
Unfortunately, she has been unable to stop smoking and continues to smoke half a pack per day. Mrs. Watson is at your office today for a pessary change. What do you want to know in history? First, let's see when she last came in to have her pessary changed. You look in the chart and see that you last changed her pessary three months ago. There were no complications at that time. Although pessary complications are uncommon, it is important to ask about them. Can you name the five symptoms of pessary complications? The five symptoms are vaginal infection, vaginal discharge, vaginal odor, vaginal bleeding, and discomfort. Vaginal discharge is due to increase in physiologic discharge with a foreign body object. Patients with vaginal bleeding may present with a pink or bloody discharge. This may be due to an ulceration or abrasion of the vaginal wall or formation of the granulation tissue. Nonetheless, if a patient has a uterus in situ, it is important to work them up for abnormal vaginal bleeding. The workup would include a pap, pelvic ultrasound, and endometrial biopsy. Vaginal odor may be due to an infection, ulceration, or pessary not being cleaned for a long period of time. Pelvic pain or discomfort could be due to pessary not fitting properly. Two rare complications of pessary use are pneumaturia secondary to fistula involving the urinary tract or passing gas or feces from the vagina secondary to rectovaginal fistula. This can occur with a neglected pessary. Mrs. Watson has been having some pelvic discomfort. She has lost 25 pounds and you believe that her pessary may be too large. She denies having any other symptoms of pessary complications. So what would you like to do on physical examination? You remove the pessary from the vagina and wash it with soap and water. You then do a speculum examination to inspect the vagina for erosions, abrasions, ulcerations and granulation tissue. Mrs. Watson's speculum examination is unremarkable. Some gynecologists do not routinely perform speculum examination. They perform it when they suspect a complication. Since Mrs. Watson needs a new size, you take a smaller pessary, coat it with primary cream or lubricant, and insert it into the vagina. You then ask Mrs. Watson to bear down. An improperly fitted pessary may be dislodged with the Valsalva. Mrs. Watson walks around your office with the new pessary and feels happy with the new size. You ask her to return for a follow-up appointment or sooner if she develops any problems. Let's now move on to the next visit. Mrs. Watson has been seeing you for pessary changes now for one year. During her routine follow-up visit, she says that she no longer wishes to use a pessary and would like to consider a surgical option. She lives two hours out of town and finds it too difficult to find transportation every three months to come to the appointments. She's fairly healthy for her age and makes a good surgical candidate. Which surgical options can you offer Mrs. Watson? There are two types of surgical procedures for prolapse. Obliterative procedures and reconstructive procedures. Obliterative procedures are typically used for elderly or medically compromised patients who have severe prolapse and do not desire to have intercourse in the future. They include lephoric colpoclesis for a patient who has a uterus and complete colpoclesis for a patient who has had a previous hysterectomy. These procedures are highly effective. The drawback is that they may result in regret due to loss of cradle activity and they may unmask urinary incontinence. Since Mrs. Watson would like to have sexual intercourse in the future, an obliterative procedure is not a suitable option for her. Now let's take a look at the reconstructive procedures. The purpose of reconstructive procedures is to restore the natural anatomical position of pelvic organs. There are multiple approaches available, which include vaginal, abdominal, laparoscopic, and robotic. The drawback of prolapse repair procedures is that they have a risk of unmasking stress urinary incontinence in approximately 25-30% to of the patients. It is important to note that urodynamics do not always reveal stress incontinence. 
it is important for patients to be aware that the risk of recurrence of a cystocele is 30%. The risk of recurrence of the middle and posterior compartment repairs is 10 to 15%. Mrs. Watson has a grade 3 cystocele and requires surgery for the anterior compartment. She has urodynamics, which are unremarkable. She decides to proceed with the anterior repair, also known as anterior colporophy. An anterior repair is used to repair the connective tissue between the bladder and the vagina. This provides support to the bladder. Complications of the surgery include anesthetic problems, bleeding, postoperative infection, cystitis, constipation, dyspareunia, damage to the ureters or bladder, and stress urinary incontinence. Mrs. Watson's surgery is a success. She presents to your office for a six-week follow-up. Her both symptoms have improved and she is able to empty her bladder fully. She has not developed any complications from the procedure. She continues to use primary cream for urogenital atrophy, seeing a pelvic floor physio, and doing Kegel exercises. She continues to be sexually active. She has also decreased smoking to a quarter pack per day with the help of cessation counseling. She's very happy with the outcome of her surgery. I would like to thank you for watching this video course. I hope that you are now more familiar with the pelvic anatomy, origins of the pelvic organ prolapse, and the approach to a patient presenting with prolapse symptoms.